on the trolley. Duluth started mass transit just about when the rest of the nation did, in the 1880s. In 1881, they incorporated the Duluth Street Railway Company. And by 1883, a modicum of tracks had been spread around town, right down Main Street on Superior Street, and the cars were pulled by mules. The system worked very well. In the 1890s, they were starting to turn it to an electric car system, and the electrification began. It was taking two years to be completed, and by 1892, these trolleys, or ones just like it, were seen all over Duluth, stretching to every corner of the city, from Gary, New Duluth, all the way out to Lakeside, Lester Park, all the way up to Condon, and all the way up to the Heights. All of Duluth was running these little dinkies, as they were called, four-wheel trolleys. And they were quite popular. In fact, they were so popular, and Duluth was growing so fast, that right after the turn of the century, these disappeared in favor of streetcars. Longer, wider, more capacity. And they lasted until the 1930s, and that's a whole other story, but we'll tell you it too. Right now, though, I'm itching to go for a ride. This thing hasn't been fired up since last year. You're going to be the first ones to ride it. Let me take you on board. None of the original dinky trolleys from that period of when these four-wheel Brill cars were running in Duluth still exist. This one came to us in 1976 from, of all places, Lisbon, Portugal, where it was originally manufactured using Brill components of an American company in 1926. They still run them in Portugal today. They still run them up and down the streets and up and down the hills, and it's quite a scene to see. In fact, people travel from all over the world just to ride those trolleys in Portugal, in Lisbon, where this one came from. And it was one of two that came to the Lake Superior Railroad Museum. They sold one, that's up in Yukon Territory, at Whitehorse. This is the 530, the one we kept. And by the way, we think that means passengers in Portuguese. Could be your lesson for today. But 24 of whatever there were sat right here. This was a trolley like any other trolley. It had advertising along the walls, places for people to sit, and it was bi-directional. You notice the controls on that end are the same as the controls I'll be using on this end to go for our little ride today. So, let's start out, shall we? I need a hat. All right, now we're ready to go. This is our brake handle right here. The person that runs the trolley is called the motor man because we're running electric motors, of course. This is the throttle control, and it's a notch control. So it not only moves us forward, but also adjusts the speed. This is the reverser. We're going this way now. We'll take all these controls and move them to the other end of the car, and that's how we'll go back when it's time to return to the station. This car also had what was known as electronic braking pretty much like dynamic braking today in a diesel electric locomotive. This had the same exact characteristics and would, just by moving this lever in the opposite direction, turns the motors into brakes. That was particularly helpful on the hills. And as you can see, in the case of Lisbon, they have plenty of hills. And that they had in common with Duluth. That's why these cars were so popular. We're clear. Now, the important thing to remember about a trolley car is how it got its name. And that is, of course, this is not the trolley. The trolley is actually that pole and wheel that connects to the overhead wire. 600 volts DC keeps this thing moving, and the horsepower is 50 out of the electric motors that are attached to the wheels. We're coming to a crossing, so we're going to have to signal to let everybody know we're on our way. Wow, <laughs> that was certainly fun. Now we're gonna turn around and go the other direction. Let me show you how we do that. Remember, what we're changing right now is the trolley itself. Oh. 
So we're at the end of the line. Now we're going to go back to the other side of the trolley car and head back to the station. Everybody enjoy the ride? Oh, never mind. All right. And now we're heading back. You'll notice, uh, and remember back when we had the episode on narrow gauge? Well, of course, the trolleys did work on narrow gauge because they had to share the street with horses and buggies and wagons and pedestrians, so they really didn't have as much room as a regular railroad would. What happened to the trolleys? Well, in the 1930s, the streetcars were doing great business. Still, the DTA exists today, the Duluth Transit Authority, which, of course, inherited all this. But back in the 1930s, when the trolleys were going away and so were the streetcars, it was kind of a bad time. There was a company that was taking over these struggling lines and helping them out. The company was called National Lines. And National Lines was coming to the rescue of streetcar companies around the country. It just so happened that the owners of the National Lines were General Motors, Mack Truck, Phillips Petroleum, and Standard Oil. You think they were much interested in trolleys and streetcars? No, I don't think so. That's why there was a mass indictment against them in 1939. But guess what? <laughs> they were all acquitted because what's good for General Motors is good for the country. Well, as you can see, <coughs> this is a restoration in progress. We cosmetically and more importantly mechanically keep all of this equipment because we use it for rides for the public in top-notch condition. Safety is the number one priority. And that restoration work, you can actually help with that. The best way? Become a member of the Lake Superior Railroad Museum. Go to lsrm.org slash memberships, sign up, and you can help keep this trolley and the rest of our exhibits in top-notch working and cosmetic order for all our guest visitors that'll start coming on July 1st. You know, when you become a member, Railroad Museum thinks of it, well, we're kind of like Madame Dubois. We depend on the kindness of strangers, being you to be a member. You don't know Madame Dubois? Oh, yes you do. She's the heroine of sorts in a streetcar named Desire. In the meantime, you know what to do. Wash your hands, cover your coughs, don't touch your face, keep a social distance. If you're sick, stay home. Stay with us to be here tomorrow for another episode, and let's take care of each other.